Hey everyone, Cobra here, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about Dungeonborn, and more importantly, about abilities in Dungeonborn. Now, I just want to put this out here right away. I'm not going to go through every single class ability for every single class right now. I'm going to talk a little bit about active abilities, what uh, activation requirements they have, passive abilities, their activation requirements, and how they work, and also, um, I, uh, sorry, abilities on equipment and weapons, and how you get those to work, you know, the whole system with that. So the reason for this is because when I first started, I had absolutely no idea. I thought that everything, you know, when you start, you get all of the abilities, everything like that, but that is not the case. So the first thing we're going to start with is the actual, um, the actual active abilities of each class. So if I open up an inventory of any particular class, you can see that there are at least two abilities, one Q, one E. Some classes have more than one. The rogue, for example, has two Qs and three Es. Now, the thing with this is different classes have different activation requirements. If you're playing as a fighter for example there is no activation requirement as long as that timer resets you can use your abilities again it costs you nothing now if you're playing as a sword master you have to have swords in your inventory to be able to do that you run out of swords you can't use your abilities anymore if you're playing as a mage character a pyromancer a priest a cryomancer you have mana if you run out of mana from using your Q or your E abilities, you have to drink a mana potion or you can no longer cast your spells. Then you have ones like the undead ones, which they collect souls. When they collect souls, that's what powers their abilities, increases their damage and all that, and allows you to keep using those abilities. And then you have the druid, which is its kind of its own thing, where it has a it can turn into a panther and while in panther form its e ability uses primal energy and you only get that back from fighting things and dealing damage in panther form so you can see a lot of different classes have different ways of um of using these active abilities and in the background right now, I'm just going to have kind of clips of some of these things, you know, showing the energy and all of that going. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get on to the next part of this. So getting into the next one, we're going to talk about weapon abilities. So for example, if I go over here to my druid... You, so you can see currently I have on my druid class a staff with Midas touch on it. Now you can see it says plus three Midas touch. Now the way this works, there's three different levels of this ability. Each one has a different activation requirement. So you can see Midas touch, the first one gives you 30 coins every time you kill something. The second one gives you 60 coins every time you open a chest for the first time. The last one gives you 1800 when you su successfully escape. But the way this works is, you can see each one has an activation requirement. The first one requires three Midas Touch, the second one six, and the third one nine. So this is how all equipment abilities work, whether they're for attacking, whether they're for things like this. They're all going to have requirements that require you to have multiple, normally, of the same item. You can see like this one alone can get me the first tier. But if I want the other ones, I have to have more. So I've got the staff, I've got the vest, I've got the mace, and I've got a ring. All that have Midas Touch. So I have four on here, totaling to nine. And that's how I have nine out of nine Midas Touch and have that last ability. So just like that, if we come over here, and you can look, you know, Fairy of the Lake here. You can see this one gives me two. And this one gives me two. So if I have these, it's going to take 10 for the first one, 20 for the second, and 30 for the last one. So I would need a whole heck of a lot more than just these two daggers. But that's kind of how that works. Once you have it in your inventory, has to be equipped, 
that's when you will have that bonus. You'll see it'll turn gold like this Midas Touch does. Because if I put, say, this in my inventory, you know, we'll go like that. You can see none of them are gold, and now my last one is not gold for that. But we'll put that back, and now it's all gold again. So that's kind of how the, um, the equipment abilities work. You know, like the Midas Touch, the Fairy of the Lake, and when getting these, one thing you're going to look for, you know, say I get a dagger, you can see it has a random modifier. There are certain things, like if I go to, I don't know, pants, you can see the green, random attribute, or Midas Touch. Random attribute, random attribute, so... The green ones in the store tend to give you Midas Touch more frequently is what it seems, but you can get a bunch of different ones from these. You can also, on the heirlooms, if you come over here, you have something leveled up enough, you can actually equip one of these gold abilities to them and give it, you know, this one gives four. So that would go towards that or go towards whatever I wanted that one to go towards. So that's how those abilities work. And then the last thing that I want to talk to you about is the passive abilities. So when you go to create a new class, you're going to look and say I want to create, I don't know, a, a... Actually, we'll go a fighter here. So you can see it's got all these passive skills. Like, for example, this one, Restraint. Cannot damage allies and cannot be damaged by allies. I saw that. I was like, sweet. My friend went to play a fighter. We're like, okay, shoot me. I shot him, he took damage. He hit me, I took damage. And we were like, what the heck? Well, the reason is, they have activation requirements. So if I go to my fighter character over here, and we go over to, it's this one right here, you can see activation re re uh, condition will 27. So you have to have certain stats that are tied to these abilities in order for them to activate. If I have 27 will, this will turn gold, and I'll have that activated. You know, if I have 42 stamina, 33 dexterity, 50 or 87 strength, that's how I'm going to get these. So if I go over to another character that I actually have stuff on, like this one, you can see I have 3 out of 5. So some of them have 2 levels. So if I went up to all the way to 87 intelligence, I could get the second level of this. But I only have this, you know, I have mine spread out. Some people will go for something like this and get the super ability. But oftentimes, I don't think, unless, maybe if you have all, like, max, you know, legendary rarity stuff, maybe you can get all of them. But normally, you're going to have to pick and choose which ones you want to go for. So look at what is going to be best for you, what's going to benefit you the most in combat, and go for that one specifically make sure you have plenty of items for it. Now the way you're gonna get these is you can look, this staff gives intelligence, this gives dexterity, dexterity, stamina, dexterity, will, you know, intelligence, stamina, stamina, strength, intelligence. So that's where you're gonna get all of these stats from, is going to be from your equipment here. So you're gonna to want to go, like if you go to create or buy some equipment, you know, some of them, like weapons will say 5 to 7 dexterity. You know, if you buy a necklace, it'll tell you what it's going to give you. But if you buy something like this, it's random. So if you buy a bunch of them, you can get uh, random ones. You could keep going and get strength and then dexterity and then stamina. So you can cycle through and end up getting what you want to get for that, if you have the gold, of course. You can also sometimes, you know, on heirlooms, it's like say I want to go over here. Um, I can unlock one of these and put six, you know, of one stat onto this robe, and then I would have that on it, although I've got this right here, which is even better. But, so you can actually do it on heirlooms as well. That's how you're going to get those stats. So, just a quick recap, guys. So, with abilities, Q and E abilities, you can switch them out for certain characters. Some, like this Pyromancer, only have one. But you want to know what your activation requirement is. Is it the Pyromancer where you have mana, you have to drink mana potions, the Druid where you have to get kill or like damage as a panther, you know, the undead ones where you have to collect souls from dead things, or something like the Swordsman 
or Swords Master where you have to have swords? Or is it, you know, Fighter where you have nothing? So pay attention to that on each character because sometimes it can affect it. Like Sword Master has really good abilities, but you have to carry a lot of extra swords with you, which can make it hard at times. So it just depends on what you feel like doing with that, but pay attention to that. Uh, pay attention to the weapon abilities. Make sure you have them stack. You know, I got Fairy of the Lake. I have 10 out of 10 on this one because I have two of these. If you have enough, you can stack these and get a bunch of abilities, get some extra damage and shield and all kinds of stuff. So make sure you pay attention to those as well and build them up. Build a set around one of these things and you can get a bunch of extra abilities added. And then pay attention to these passive abilities. Every class is going to be different. Pay attention to what you need. Select the ones that you think are going to best apply. And those are my recommendations for you in terms of abilities. I hope this is helpful to you guys. Um, I do my best to think of things that I think, you know, a lot of people would need to know that would be helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any, any suggestions for other videos, topics you want to see, let me know. Let me know if you want me to stream or, you know, put up just normal gameplay of me fighting, you know, PvP, whatever you guys want to see. I read the comments and I'm happy to oblige to help you guys out, give you what you want to see. Please like and subscribe and continue to watch my videos and I will see you guys next time.